So today I'm actually not going to upload a tutorial. We are going to talk about common problems that 3D artists run into when they are working on a project. Because right now I am working on the iPhone course and I want to let you in on some secrets and some stuff that is going on behind the background and none of you actually see what happens. However, I feel that any 3D artist runs into these problems and wants to solve them. So I'm going to show you exactly how I solve these problems, how I treat these problems and how I can find a solution as quickly as possible because you all know I like to be economical with my time. We are working on the iPhone project and I've got a piece of music right over here and it's working out fine but then you have these renders. I don't like this one. This one is fine but they, are, they don't really add up. So we have two of these shots and the reason why this occurs is because I was working with a different style of music but that music is copyrighted and I also want you guys to be able to follow this tutorial along all the way until the end without running into copyright issues once you start uploading this. Uh, but now we run into this problem where not everything is flowing as nicely anymore. But I actually want to give you guys the best free course that I have to offer uh, within the limitations of my own time constraints and the limitations that I place upon myself. Uh, so basically a couple of these renders are not up to par to my standards. So if I look at this one with the social media right over here, I think the camera motion is fine. I think the idea was uh, correct, but I don't think that the execution actually managed to uphold my standards. And I feel like this shot should actually be removed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I also believe that right here in the beginning, uh, there's this shot which feels a bit more like a beginner animation. And do keep in mind that I did not edit this all the way until the end. This is just like a preview of what I'm trying to do so I know that I'm moving in the right direction. Uh, but with this render, I feel like it is moving in such a way that a beginner would animate it. And that's not actually the goal of this course. You want to break out of that beginner position so you become a pro animator. And in this particular shot, I really don't feel like we are reaching that level, we are reaching that uh, creme de la creme that we're trying to find uh, and I maybe just uh, want to take it out and the reason for it is actually quite simple I think it's a little bit too busy there's really no focus point it's too much in your face so the uh, iPhone is even covered outside of the camera and that is the next thing that I'm going to talk about there are actually three ways to solve this problem number one is simply redo the shot so simply make it a little bit better here and there add some extra sauce, make the animation a little bit better in the graph editor and you can move it and make sure that it looks good, change the camera animation just a little bit. In my case, I can't really do this because I am constrained by the fact that I have to make these tutorials and they have to be right from beginning to end so you don't end up with a mess. Because if I were to start changing, oh, by the way, I changed uh, the camera angle and I changed this and I changed that, then the entire tutorial wouldn't make any sense anymore and you would reach the end of the tutorial and you're like, bro, you just literally changed everything, made a different render. That's not cool, man. So I, I have to live with that constraint where I cannot make that much changes outside of the tutorial. However, you can, if you have a lot of time, simply make a better animation of the one that you made before. So if you are unhappy with the animation, simply change it, simply change it. You can actually do that. For me, that's not really the case. If this tutorial doesn't work out, I just cut it off. Another solution would be to remove it. So remove the entire shot. I don't have any emotional affiliation to the render that I made. I am simply looking for the end product. So if I have to cut off half of the entire animation and I rendered like 60 frames for nothing, no problem. I'm just going to cut it off, make sure that the animation looks good. So that is something that you can do as well. Eliminate in the timeline itself, in the editing process itself. And now the third option is actually to replace the shot. Planning usually fails. There's this cool quote that says, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, that's basically the same with 3D. If you are working on a project, of course you can plan out as much as possible, but then you find that maybe this part is going to take me 10 hours too long, or this part's going to be one hour, or this one is not going to be of the right quality, or I had to spend a lot of time on this one while I should have been spending time on that one. And during that process, you will learn to find the problems and how to accurately solve them. And that's actually the entire idea of doing a free course like this, is to solve problems along the way. If you are running into problems constantly, then the only skill you truly need is problem solving. Because if you can solve the problem, then you can always reach the end result. And that's the entire purpose of this video. You are going to run into problems guaranteed. And I could make it look like this is all one perfect process where everything is a win. I'm just winning every single day. I'm just making these product animations and everything is going fine. But what you don't see is that I'm actually planning these shots out from beforehand. I will try when I make a geometry node setup, for example, like the meteorite. I will try it beforehand, make sure that it works, and then I will record it. And when I record it, I have to make sure that my presentation is on point, is on fire. The worse my presentation is, the more editing I have to do. So it also costs me more time to make more mistakes. And that is something very important. I try to make sure that I follow every step along the way so I don't have to make a lot of editing. 
I tried. <laughs> You see, can you, can you see how much editing work this would cost? Because I'm simply failing my presentation right here. So I'm limited within these constraints of having to do a tutorial. I have to make sure that I speak well. I have to make sure that I don't diverge too much from the original process. I have to make sure that you guys can understand exactly what I'm doing and what I'm saying. So it has to be clean and smooth and I have to present it well. So all of these factors combined make sure that this entire free course is going to take me so much more time than you would actually think for a small render like this. It's basically just a minute of 3D animations. And I would be done way quicker if I didn't have to make tutorials of it. But that's just my own time constraints. The time constraints that you might be dealing with are like, you only have seven days to make this product animation. Or you don't want to give yourself the free time to work on this animation forever because then you're never going to say to yourself, ah, it's done, it's perfect. So you have to stop at a certain point. You have to give yourself a deadline and make sure that things are done. And that brings me back to the third solution. Once you run into all of these problems and you want to solve them, you can now actually see what is going on. You have a playing field before you and you can see the right strategies. You can see the right moves. Now you know what to do. You already have some renders. Oh, why wow, this iPhone is moving to the, to the top. Maybe I can do a pan whip, or maybe I can have the other shot start the exact same. Or maybe I can speed it up at the end and slow it down in the middle and then speed it up at the beginning again of the next shot. So then you actually solve all the problems along the way. You Now you have a vision. Now you can actually see where all the renders are, how far you are in the process, what problems you need to solve first. So when it comes to all of these, one of the most important things that you can do, I believe, is to have certain focus. If you manage focus, you manage creativity. And if you can get that creative power out in a couple of hours, I don't know how long you work, I work for 12 hours a day, but eight hours of those are not as productive as the other four hours. So I'm basically working at 50% speed. It's still moving ahead. The car is still driving. So I am driving forward no matter how effective my hour is. But in the first four hours or the last four hours, depending on how my schedule is planned, that's where all the creative power lies. And you want to make sure that you use that efficiently. So how do you actually manage that time? Simply don't do anything else except for work. It's really as simple as that. You don't go to the supermarket, you don't check your phone, you don't talk with your mates, you don't talk with your girlfriend. You simply shut yourself off and sit in front of your computer knowing what you have to do. I like to make tasks the night before. So I make a task list in Notion and then I will work out that entire task list from the, from the night before in this day. And uh, in the first four hours, I always plan the most important stuff because I know that I can get the most stuff done in those four hours. Now for the final part of this video, which is actually more like a rant, I'm going to show you one more trick that you can use in order to speed up your entire production process in Blender. And that one trick is quite simple actually. Always ask yourself, how can I do this faster? If you ask the question, you will find a solution. If you don't ask the question, you will not do it faster. You will do exactly what you were set out to do, or you will do even more because you're just in a creative process and, oh, let me spend an extra couple of hours on this. And uh, don't get me wrong, you should do that as well, but plan that. Plan that you are going to be creative, that you're going to be free with your time. Otherwise, simply make sure that you always ask yourself the question, how can I do this faster? Because if you can do it faster, then you can make more renders. You can be creative more often. So that is basically a key component. And how do you actually apply this? Well, I look at this render, I've got an iPhone. All right, so we've got an iPhone. What type of background am I going to use? And then I feel like, wow, what if we do this outer space thing, you know? Because Apple likes to associate with outer space as if iPhone is coming from some alien planet. What if we make some alien planet and we do it? No, let's just use a normal white plane background with some normal three point lighting setups. Bam, I just got out four hours of work. I also had the idea of making a assembly or disassembly animation in this one. So you can uh, have the iPhone and it kind of rolls out with all the component parts and all that stuff. And then I realized people don't really like to model all that complex stuff, all, the, all those little things. And then I would have a tutorial like one and a half hour long where we are going to model the interior of the iPhone before we actually start doing the destruction. And I was like, is this going to be fun for my audience? Is this going to be fast? It will probably cost me quite some time to make that. And I eventually just decided it should be left out, it should be gone. So I just cut it out and now it didn't cost me any time. So that's just the thing that you have to do always. As a 3D artist, ask yourself the question, how can I do this faster? Do that with anything in life and you will find a way. So that's basically the end of this entire presentation and there are a couple of key points. Uh, you can reiterate, you can eliminate or you can redo. And those are the things that you have to do as a 3D artist. Make sure that you manage your time well. And as a final bonus tip, of course, ask yourself the question, how can I do this faster? So I will ask you now, how can you click faster on the next video? Simply click right over here. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep
the duffel bag up inside my coop Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you You wanna be a boss, do it like I do, uh.